Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown, your spiritual impact trainer. Welcome to our spiritual impact exercise classes. We're here Monday through Friday, getting the word of God so that we can get the principles, so we can apply them to our life, so that we are growing, changing, and progressing, that we are being impacted by the word so we can impact the world. This is all about us being spiritually nourished, fed, prepared, so that we are purposeful, so that we are changing and exercising godliness. And so welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining us, and if you're already a part of the sit-ups, just welcome back. So here we are. We're getting getting ready to start a series on um, the results of a spirit controlled life. We've been talking about a spirit controlled life, but right now we're going to talk about the results of it. How do you know if you have a spirit controlled life? What are some of the things that are produced? What are some of the results of having a spirit controlled life? So we are going to Galatians chapter five. We're going to be looking at verses 22 through 22. 22 through 25 in Galatians chapter 5. So I encourage you, get your pen, paper, your highlighter, get your Bible or your electronic device, whatever it is that you use in order for you to go to the scriptures. You want to write down everything we discuss, every scripture that we go to, so you can go back and you can study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So again, turn your Bibles, Galatians chapter 5, get all your utensils together. We're going to open up in prayer, and we're going to start today talking about um, the, the results of a spirit-controlled life, beginning with love. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We honor you, worship you, we glorify you, we lift you up, oh God. You are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. There is none other. You are the great I am. We worship you. We embrace you. We surrender to you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will pour into us today spiritual nourishment, that we would grow thereby, that we would increase, that we would bear good fruit that will remain, that we would be productive in everything that is done and every word that is spoken. Let it bring glory to your name. Be according to your purposes. And let it be, Lord God, that we are continuing to grow as men and women of God, according to your plans and your purposes, Lord God, that you would be pleased and that others would want to know what must they do to be saved. We thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Galatians 5, 22 through 25, King James Version. This is what it says. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So this is showing us the fruit of the spirit. Previously, the verses before this is talking about, you know, those that walk in the flesh, what is manifest, right? Right. Those are things that keep you from inheriting the kingdom of God. It talks about adultery and fornication and hatred and all of those different things. Those are the results of walking in the flesh, after the flesh, right? Our carnal mind. But this, this is the fruit of the spirit. And because we've been talking about, you know, a spirit control life, what is the evidence? What are the results? And so the first thing in here is love. But first, I want to look at these verses of scripture in the Amplified and just break it down. These four verses of scripture. And this is what it says. But the fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with his passions and appetites, if we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. So again, because we're talking about a spirit-controlled life, we are talking about 
um, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And when we are, and we're walking by the Spirit, right? We are claiming to live by the Spirit. There's some fruit. There's some evidence. There's some results. And so that's what we want to talk about today. And the first thing that is listed with the fruit, and notice again, this is fruit, not fruits. So this is all together. This is one fruit. This is all together. It's many things. It's nine different things, but it all works together as a fruit. Okay. So, um, and it's produced. It's like the seed of the word is in us. The Holy Spirit abides in us. And then there is like root and there is growth and there is fruit and there is evidence and there is growth and there is change, right? And so that people that see us or the world that hears us or or sees our walk or our lifestyle know that we don't belong in the world, that we um, live a different life, that we are empowered not by the world, not by people, not by money, not by things that perish, but by God's Holy Spirit. It's evident. And so now let's look at this. Um, first of all, let's look at this word love before we, um, well, let's look at this first verse, verse 22. When it says the fruit of the spirit, let's look at the word fruit first in the Greek. The word for fruit in the Greek is karpos, K-A-R-P-O-S. The New Testament was originally written in the Greek. So we're looking at the Greek word karpos. So this word, obviously, it also means, you know, uh, vegetable. It means, you know, fruit, fruit, right? But it also means deed, action, and result. It means profit. It means gain. So these are the things that we profit, the things that we gain, the result and the action of us living after the spirit in the spirit. Right. So these are actions. These are deeds. This is the the result of. So this is how we live, what we do. And this is the result of it. This is what is manifest in us, what is produced in us as spirit controlled children of God. So now this word also means a believer, a branch lives in union with Christ, the vine. So this this word also is the word that is used in John chapter 15 when Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the fruit. And he begins to tell us if we abide in him and he in us that we will bear much fruit, but without him, we can do nothing. He talks about the one that is not bearing fruit will be cut off, right? Tied up, thrown in the fire. But those that produce fruit, those that are connected to him and producing, right? Those are the ones that God prunes and purges, right? Removing unwanted elements from us so we can produce even more fruit. So in other words, when we are connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, who is the living word of God, and we have the spirit of God on the inside of us. So we are following after the spirit, walking in the word, we're producing fruit. We are growing and producing. We are changing. We are progressing. We are being impacted by this word. And there is change taking place. And as we're bearing fruit, God continues to to prune us and purge us and remove things that, that, that shouldn't be there. So we can bear more and more and more and more and more and more and more fruit. We are being productive, right? And so this is... um. Those that live in union with Christ. Also, uh, it means um, it results from two life streams. This word carpos, it results from two life streams. The Lord living his life through ours to yield what is eternal. Okay, so when we talk about producing and gaining, not like the world, the world likes to gain things, uh, material things, things that perish. We want to gain that which is um, yielding the things that are eternal. Right. So this is two life streams. God living his life through us. So this word fruit, we think of harvest. We think of, you know, because the word tells us. You know, don't be deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that with that also he will reap. So if you if you sow to the flesh, Galatians six says you will reap destruction. But the spirit, that's what we're sowing to. And that's life everlasting. That is gaining things that will give us eternal life that will connect us with God, allow us to be a witness to the world. OK, so there's a lot that goes with this. So. That is the word fruit. Okay, so this verse of scripture says the fruit of the spirit 
is love. So that's where we want to focus today is on this word love. Now, we know there's different types of love that are addressed in the Bible when you look in the Hebrew and the Greek, depending on the verse and the context of the scripture. In this particular verse of scripture, this is the agape love. This is the type of love God has for us. So when we talk about the spirit, uh, the fruit of the spirit is love. We're talking about agape love. We're not talking about just the world's love where you love somebody because they love you. You like somebody because they like you. You help somebody because they helped you. You uh, greet somebody because they greet, greet you. And make sure that you write down every verse of scripture that I reference so you can go back and look at them yourself. Go back and look at John 15. Go back and look at Galatians chapter six, right? Verses six through nine, because I referenced those. And for time's sake, I didn't go to those, but you need to go back to those. You need to read those. You need to nurse and rehearse and meditate on those so that with all you're getting, you get understanding. But in addition to that, you make sure that what you're hearing is the truth. So go back and look at John 15 verses one through five. Go back and look at Galatians chapter six, verses six through nine. But also we're meditating in Galatians five. But I just want to say that because when we look at this type of love, when we look at this agape love, this is the love God has for us. When it tells us in John 3, 16, the core of our faith that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That is God's agape love. Not that we deserve his love. Not that we deserve for Jesus to have died for us on the cross, but because God loves us with that type of love. Not the kind of love where, you know, uh, Jesus talks in Matthew chapter five about, you know, um, us loving our enemies. Right. And he says, you know, what reward do you have? If you love those that love you, if you greet those that greet you, even the publicans do that. In other words, sinners do that. The world does that. So that is in Matthew chapter five, verses 38 through 48. He's talking about that kind of love. And he tells us to forgive, to love, to bless those that curse us, do good to them that hate us, love, uh, pray for those that despitefully use and persecute us. We are supposed to operate in an agape love. And you can only do that by the spirit of God, because we know what it means to be hurt by somebody. We know what it, you know, what it feels like in the flesh when we want to get revenge and we have malice in our heart and hatred and anger, right? But when you have the spirit of God operating in you and you're living by the spirit and walking after the spirit in the spirit, there is a fruit that is produced in this agape love that allows us and enables us and empowers us to forgive, to love, to bless those that curse us and do good to them that hate us, to overcome evil with good. Right. And so when we look at this agape love, the word is agape in this verse in the Greek, A-G-A-P-E, A-G-A-P-E, agape. And it means love. It means benevolence. It means goodwill. It means esteem. It means um, typically referring to divine love, what God prefers. This is the love God prefers. There is a love between husband and wife. There is a love with friends, right? You know, these are different loves that are mentioned in the Bible, right? But this is a God kind of love. This is the kind of love that God desires for his children to operate in. And so when we think of different verses of scripture, that use this word love, this affection, this this type of um, benevolent giving type of love, right? This type of love that, that shows God to the world. That Jesus says, this is how the world will know you belong to me. The love you have one for another. This is um, one of the definitions of this agape love is love feasts, right? Um, feasts expressing and fostering mutual love. Um, which is which used to be held by Christians right uh, before the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Um, it says, and at which the poorer Christians mingled with the wealthier and partook in common with the rest of food provided at the expense of the wealthy. This is a giving kind of love. Right. This is the type of love where Jesus tells us, you know, um, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And so this is the type. It's a giving love. It's a self-sacrificing love. When John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It then tells us in first John three sixteen. 
Because he laid his life down for us, we ought to lay our life down for the brethren. It's a sacrificial type of love. It's a giving type of love. It's a looking at the interest of others as well as our own type of love from Philippians chapter 2. So some of the verses of scripture um, that I want to look at, let's look at... Um, We're going to look at the love chapter. There is a love chapter, right? Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're just going to look at a few verses here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What does this love look like? We reference some. It means that it's like we, we lay our life down for others. We look at the interests of others. We're helping others. We're pouring into others. We're loving one another with a, a love that isn't based off of how they treat us or if they love us back. Because when we think about this agape love, we're talking about a love where Jesus laid his life down for us. Not because we deserved it. Not because we were kind to him. Not because we loved him first. Not because we loved God. But while we were yet in sin, Christ died. That means while we were opposing the word of God. Right. Jesus is the living word of God. We were opposing the word of God. So we were opposing Christ. We were opposing God because it's his word. Right. We were living in rebellion to him. And he loved us with this agape love that he wanted to reconcile us to himself. He wanted us to be in right relationship with him. So he made a way by sending his son to sacrifice his life, to suffer in our place, to pay the penalty for our sins. That's the type of love we're supposed to walk in. Not that it's all about us, that we're saved and we're just supposed to be blessed. Everything's supposed to go our way. Nobody's supposed to do anything to us. We're not supposed to have any opposition, but we're just supposed to just, you know, be blessed and everything's going well for me. No, it means you sacrifice. Like Paul, when he went to prison, he was beaten. He was stoned for the gospel's sake. So it keeps for the gospel's sake. So he could preach the gospel so others could be saved. So others could be healed. So others could be renewed. So others could be changed. That's agape love. That it's not about me. I'll suffer so somebody else can get what they need. So now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The word charity is used here in place of God, in place of God, in place of love, because charity is the word that means love, agape love. That's the word right here. And so I so many noises this morning. Did you hear the plane, whatever that was? OK, so. Um, charity, verse four, we're looking at verse four through eight, four through eight in first Corinthians chapter 13. This is what love looks like. This is love. This is agape love. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So again, it's not about seeking those things that are temporal, those things that will fail, those things that will seek, uh, cease, those things that will vanish. But this is something that never fails. Love never fails. So to be led by the spirit, abiding in the sun, the vine, and we're the branch, we produce fruit. We are, we are the result of us walking after the spirit is that we walk in this love. And what does that mean? Let's look at this in the Amplified, these same verses of scripture. What does that mean? What does that look like when I'm walking in love? It means in verse four that I endure with patience and serenity. I'm kind and I'm thoughtful. Think about it. Patience. That's one of the, the, the uh, fruit of the spirit, but we're not going to go into that today with serenity. Love is kind. We're kind. We're thoughtful. That means that it's not always about me. I can't be selfish. That's why Jesus said, if you're going to follow him, deny yourself. We have to deny ourselves. That means that it's not always about me. I don't have to have my way. This verse of scripture says I, that love is not jealous or envious. I don't have to have what you have. I don't have to do what you do. And even if you, if I feel like in my carnal mind, right, that I deserve this promotion or I deserve to be able to do this in the church, right? I worked hard for this and how did you get it? No, love doesn't envy, isn't jealous because I know if I operate in love, God is love. God is love, it tells us in 1 John. 
over and over again. God is love. So if I'm operating in love, I know I'm connected to God and whatever God wants me to have, God promotes. God is the one that sets up and he sets down. The Bible tells us that in the word. So I'm not jealous of you. I'm not envious of what you have. I'm not jealous of your promotion or what you're gifted in or what you're able to do or how your life is, looks like it's blessed and covered and your spouse or your children or your job or your business. I don't want what you have. I'm grateful for you. I'm, I'm rejoicing with you. And so I don't brag. The love does not brag. It's not proud or arrogant. That means I'm not boasting in myself. I'm boasting in God because he is love. So to operate in love and God is love, I can only boast in him and his great works and his mighty works because whatever I accomplish is only because of love. God, God is love, right? And then um, it's not rude. It's not self-seeking. Again, it's not about me getting my way. I don't have to have my way. I just want to make sure I'm in right standing with God. I want others to get what God has for them. I want others to be blessed. I want others to be covered. I want others to be healed and whole. So I'm not rude. That means that even if, 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 if someone I come in contact with is rude, I don't retaliate. I don't, I'm not rude because they're rude because I'm operating in charity and love. Why? Because I'm led by the spirit. I'm operating in the spirit. I'm walking in the spirit and the fruit of that, right? Jesus says, you know, a tree by its fruit. If I got good seed in me. The word of God is the seed in my heart and I'm receptive to it and I'm applying it in the spirit of God is leading me. I'm producing spiritual fruit. So where someone else may be operating in the flesh and they are rude and they're arrogant or they're prideful or they're bragging or they're boasting or they're unkind or they're jealous or they're envious. That's not an excuse for me to operate that way. I got different seed in me. I'm led by the spirit and I'm mortifying the deeds of the flesh. So I'm not... I'm not controlled by the flesh in my body. I'm controlled by the spirit of God. It says it's not provoked easily. Not It is not, I'm sorry, not self-seeking, not provoked, nor overly sensitive or easily angered. It's not, it does not take into account a wrong endured. So listen, not provoked or, or um, overly sensitive or easily angered. So that means that like James tells us in James chapter one, we are swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. I'm not easily angered if I'm focused on being led by the spirit of God today. If I'm walking in the spirit of God today, if I'm if I'm allowing the, the seed of the word to operate him, if I'm abiding in Christ and he and me today, I'm not easily angered. I'm not easily provoked. What someone says or does is not going to infect me, but the word is affecting my reaction and my response because I'm operating in love. Who is God? His spirit is in me. His word is in me. His seed is in me. His son is in me. It's not me, but it's him operating in me and through me. Remember, this is um, this word uh, for agape love, right? Remember, it's not us. This is this is us operating in God's love, right? And so this is not just about us having our way. This is um, what the word tells us. This fruit is, remember, the Lord living his life through ours to yield what is eternal, yielding souls, souls coming to Christ because we're sowing the word into others because the word has been sown into us. So this is about people gaining life, not about us getting our way. This type of love is a sacrificial love. The other verses of scripture that 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 um, show us what this love looks like, you, you can just go back and reference them. Go back and look up some of the verses of scripture. We have um, Romans 5 and 8. Just write it down. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That means that while we were haters of God, while we were opposing him and his word, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, he didn't wait for us to get right, get clean, to deserve it because it never would have been able to happen. Right. And so God in his love and his mercy made a way for us, sent his son to die for us. Christ died while we were still opposing God. He sacrificed his life while we were still haters. Right. Um, also. Don't forget to write down John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16 and then John 15 and 13. 
John 15 and 13. We already talked about John 15 verses 1 through 5. But verse 13, Jesus says, greater love has no man than this. To lay down his, they lay down one's life for his friends. Again. That connects with 1 John 3.16 and John 3.16. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? That's God showing his love. 1 John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus laid his life down for us, and we ought to lay our life down for the brethren. So God loved us, and his son, Jesus died for us. We ought to lay our life down for others. And then John 15.13, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. So listen, this is all about self-sacrifice, self-denial. This is about others, not about us. Jesus died for us, not for ourselves. We lay down our life for others, not for ourselves. This is the greatest form of love. You're giving. You're pouring out. It's not about me. I'm not easily provoked, easily angered. Why? Because everything that somebody says about me, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have. It's what God says about me. So what they say, they said. What they did, they did. But I still operate in love because I have the seed of the word and the spirit of God. And so um, it is the result of God's presence in me. That's what it is. His love. He is love. So how can we show God living in his presence in us if we don't operate in love? And that's who he is. It's impossible. We're going to close out in prayer. Go back and meditate on those verses of scripture. And also don't forget to join us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Facebook Live and Instagram Live for uh, morning prayer and word as well. So we go into the word in the morning and then you can get this. And this is actually uploaded on my YouTube channel normally uh, about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time the night before. So you can get this at night and wake up and join us live in the morning and go to bed with the word and then get some word and some prayer to get you through the Today. So we are staying in his presence, growing, changing, progressing because we are exercising godliness, being impacted by his word. Why? So we can impact the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and honor you. I thank you for those watching and listening. I pray, Lord God, your anointing upon each of us that we have spiritual growth and increase, that we are walking in love today on purpose and intentional. We love our enemies. We pray for them. Lord God, Father, we do good to them. I thank you, Lord God, help us to operate in this love, this agape love, that we will bring glory to your name, that we would be healed from hurts from the inside out, that we will be delivered from the bondage of unforgiveness and, and, and malice and clamor. Lord God, Father, intentionally obeying your word, submitting to your truth, that we would draw near to you and you draw near to us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. And I will see you on the next sit ups. It's time for sit ups. All sit ups. Spiritual impact training using prayers and scripts.